Shalom family, all esteem to Yahuwah the Most High God and His Son, Yahusha HaMashiach, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. I'm going to get into how are the children of Israel described in Scripture. So, let's go to Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 3. So, I see chapter 48 and verse 3. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. So, the Most High has shown us the former things from the beginning in His Word. So, let's go to Psalms. Let's pick up on verse 102 and verse 18. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. So these things that are written are for our generation. So now we talk about the description of Israel and scripture. Let's start from the beginning at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth Upon the earth. So we were made in his image and his likeness. So the image of the in the likeness of the most high and the Mashiach. So let's go to Daniel chapter seven and verse nine. Let's see what the likeness of the most high is. Daniel chapter seven and verse nine. And I beheld the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. And his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. So we see his hair was like the head of pure wool. Okay? So we know what people has woolly hair. So let's go to Daniel chapter 10. In verse 5 and 6. And let's see what uh, Yahusha HaMashiach looks like. Then I lift up my eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was like the barrel. And his face is the appearance, appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire. And his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. So let's look at what polished brass looks like. Because brass. Let's see. There's some brass. Okay. So we know that brass is brown in color. All right. So now we got woolly hair, we got brass that's polished. Let's go into Revelation 1 1. And let's see what John the Revelator saw. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Let's go down to 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, unto Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So he told him to write it down. 
So now, what did he write down? 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool and white like snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So, once again, we've got that woolly hair. And we've got feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So if we burn rice in a furnace, it's going to be brown or black. So once again, we've got burned brass right here. You see what color that is, right? Okay. So image and likeness of the Most High and the Messiah. So now let's get into the Most High. Revelation 4.3. And he sat and was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne and the sight unto an emerald. So now, when we look at what a jasper stone looks like, let's see what a jasper stone looks like. Jasper, that's brown. Sardine stone, sardis stone, brown. So we see the color. Everybody says there's no color. But you see, it was there was a rainbow round about the throne, so there was every color up there. But we see that the Most High was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. So he was brown. But we get into the angels. What do the angels look like? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 7. And their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a cow's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Burnished brass. Okay. Let's go and take a look at the first man, Adam. Uh, okay, so Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed unto his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So, let's see. Dirt. Let's see what dirt looks like. So, if man was formed of the dust of the ground, it all looks brown to me. Okay. Uh, going into Joseph. Let's go to Genesis chapter 42 and verses 1, 3. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn, no, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, why do you look upon one another? Verse 3. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. Verse 6. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren and he knew them. But he made himself strange unto them and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan, to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. So, let's take a look at what happened when Joseph's brothers got back to Jacob. Because Joseph sent them back. <laughs> look at how they describe Joseph. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me and take the food for the famine of your households and be gone. So they didn't recognize their own brother. They described him as an Egyptian. The Lord of the country. They were in Egypt. So Joseph passed for an Egyptian. We know that Egyptians were black people. So once again, we've got Joseph, who would be 
where the tribe of Ephraim of the Israelites come from. And he passed for an Egyptian. So let's look at Exodus 2. Exodus 2 and verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Now, at this time, the Egyptians had a decree that all of the firstborn of uh, sons of any of the, the Hebrews at that time were being killed because they were becoming too great in number for the Pharaoh. He felt that the nation was getting too strong as a whole. And his fear was that they would they would side with their enemies and take over Egypt. So he was having the firstborn males killed. So this is why they hid their child for three months. Um, well, let's go down to. Let's go down to verse 10. And the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So Moses was taken in by Pharaoh's daughter. After Moses' true mother put him in a bassinet, put him on the water. One of the servant girls got him. Pharaoh's daughter ended up adopting him as a son. So now let's go down to verse 16. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you are so how is it that you are come to so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. So we see these Midian daughters. They saw Moses. And they saw him as an Egyptian. They couldn't tell the difference between him and a Hebrew. And we see that Moses was. Adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He was the grandson of the Pharaoh. So can you imagine Pharaoh sitting there with Moses on his lap as his grandson? So clearly, Hebrews could pass for Egyptians because they look like the same. And we know that Egyptians were so called black. So now when we get into the fourth chapter in verse 6. Exodus 4 and verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into the, unto thy bosom. And, put, and he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and he plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So this was a test that the Most High gave to Moses, um, because in the first verse he said, Behold, they will not believe me, they will not hearken unto my voice, for they will say the Lord had not appeared unto thee. So he wanted him to have signs that he could take to the Hebrews and to Pharaoh to determine who he was dealing with, that he was dealing with the Most High. So this test of him putting his hand into his bosom and taking it out and it being leprous as snow would have only worked if he was a melanated man. Because leprosy is when you don't have melanin in your skin. So by putting it in his bosom and, and then turning it to snow and then pulling it back out and putting it back in, taking it out again, and it being his other flesh, that means that his other flesh was dark. So now, going into his sister, 
let's look at Numbers. 12th verse. So now Aaron and Miriam were speaking against Moses because he had married um, an Ethiopian woman. And this is in verse 1. Let's get down to the ninth because the Most High responded and it says the anger, the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not thine sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one of the dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. So this leprosy made someone look like they were a newborn baby. No melanin in the skin. So he was saying that she became leprous, white as snow. So clearly, being Moses' sister, Moses passed for an Egyptian. Her being leprous and that being considered a curse. Right? It says, let her not be one as, let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. So this was something that clearly was something that wasn't normal. Her being a melanated woman. So now getting into Leviticus, we're going to find out another attribute that wasn't with the children of Israel. So when we get into Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 30, it says, Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there must be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy, Upon the head or beard. So we can see here yellow hair, yellow thin hair is considered leprosy. So we know that the children of Israel didn't have yellow hair. Once again. So let's talk about Solomon. We know that Solomon. In 1 Kings uh, 4, talks about all the things that he wrote. Well, let's read it. 1 Kings 4.30 And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the, all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezraite, and Heman, and Kakal, Kalkal, and Darda, the sons of Mahal. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. So a lot of people say that the Song of Solomon wasn't written by Solomon, but 1,005, he wrote that. Let's look at Song of Solomon 1.5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So he's describing himself. Let's get into Song of Solomon 5 and verse 1, or 11 rather. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. So locks, bushy, woolly hair, Starting to get the picture. Let's go into Jeroboam, who was the king that succeeded uh, Solomon. Let's go into 1 Kings 11 and 28. So now we get into 28th verse. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. So 31. 
Now we see Ahiah was the one who uh, was the prophet that came on to uh, Jeroboam and basically told him that he would be getting a portion of the kingdom because Solomon had fallen into idolatry. So in 31, he had taken um, his garment here and he, he had torn it into uh, 12 pieces. In 31, he says, take the 10 pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and I will give 10 tribes to thee. So Jeroboam was getting the northern kingdom. He was getting the 10, king, 10 tribes. And when Solomon found out about this, he was upset um, that Jeroboam was being chosen. So now, I'm just taking a look here. When we go down to 40, it says, Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt unto Shinak, the king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. So, fleeing into Egypt, Jeroboam had to be able to blend in with Egyptians. Otherwise, why would you go there? So clearly, he was a so-called black man. All right, so now going into Job, let's look at Job. Job 30th and the 30th verse. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat. So Job is describing himself as black. Let's look at what the tribe of Judah described, was described as in Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah, the 14th chapter and the second verse, Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is going up. So, once again, we see what the ground looks like. They are black unto the ground. So now when we look at the appearance of the sons of Zion, the sons of Judah. Let's go to Lamentations. And let's see what Lamentations says. So Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 2. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed, esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? So now, let's go into the eighth verse. Their visage is blacker than coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones and is withered. It has become like a stick. So, but once again, their visage. So let's look at what a visage is. Visage. So the word visage, the face, countenance, or appearance of a person. So their face, their countenance, their appearance is blacker than a coal. So once again, we see these people were so-called black people. Let's go into Lamentations 5.10. And let's see what further is said about them. It says, our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. So, let's look at the children of Israel in Amos 9 and verse 7. And let's see what's said about them again. 9 and verse 7. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians to me? O children of Israel, saith the Lord, have I not brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt from the Philistines, from Kaphtar, and the Syrians from Kir? So let's look up Ethiopians. How are Ethiopians described? Ethiopian. Let's get rid of this. So a native or inhabitant of Ethiopia, a member of any of the mythical or actual peoples usually described by the ancient Greeks as dark skinned. 
and living far to the south. Archaic, a black person. So the Most High is describing them as Ethiopians. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians to me? Dark skinned, black person. All right, so let's get into the Messiah or the Mashiach. Matthew chapter 2. We already saw what John the Revelator saw, but let's look at what Matthew's account was in Matthew 2 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee the word, for here I will seek to seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. So once again, how can you hide in Egypt amongst Egyptians unless you appear as an Egyptian appears? So once again, we know the Egyptians were so-called black people. And we see that Mary and Joseph fled to Egypt to escape Herod. And then we see in the 19th verse, and when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So he was in Egypt, blending in with the Egyptians because they look like Egyptians. Egyptians favored the Israelites. The Israelites look like Egyptians. The Egyptians were black. Starting to fill in some blanks here. All right, so now let's go to Simon Peter, who was one of uh, Christ's disciples. Let's look at Acts 13.1 and see if we can find out a little bit more about Simon Peter. Simon Peter, now. They were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, as Simon, that was called Neger, and Lucius of Serene, and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. So now, Simon that was called Neger, let's go and look that up. Because sometimes in the interlinear and concordance, it gives us a little bit more info. So let's make sure who we're talking about here. So Simon, all right, who was that? That was the original name of Peter the Apostle, Simon Peter, all right? So now what was his nickname that they were calling him? It says that he was called... Simon that was called Neger. All right. Let's get into that word. See what that word means. So here's the word. Let's see what the etymology and translation. Um, Strong's G 3526. Niger. 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 Sounds what so-called black people were called in slavery. And throughout. Jim Crow and segregation and down to this day. So we know that this is his nickname, but what does it mean? Strong's definitions, neger, of Latin origin, black, neger, a Christian, neger. So it means black. So his nickname was black. Simon Peter, neger. And that's what they called us. All right. So getting into the Apostle Paul. Let's go to Acts. And let's go to the 21st chapter. Let's go to the 37th verse. 
And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art thou not that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led us out un into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian. Once again, we know Egyptians were black people. Paul passed for an Egyptian. Let's go into Romans 11. Roman talks a little, I mean, Romans talks a little bit about um, Paul's tribe. Romans 11, 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So we know that Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin, passed for an Egyptian. We know Simon Peter, one of the foremost apostles. His nickname was Neger, which means black. Messiah was able to hide with his family in Egypt because he passed, they all passed for Egyptians. We know that the tribes of Judah were described as black. Job was described as black. Solomon was described as black. Miriam, Moses, Joseph. The Bible was written by Hebrews who are black people for Hebrews that are black people. This is our history book, people. Time to take notice. So, in the scriptures, the children of Israel are black. Next time, I'm going to get into who the children of Israel are today. Because in the Bible, the scriptures, they're black. Shalom, family. End times.